Hi there, welcome back. So far we learned about virtual networking or VNet, but now it's time for us to go for a deeper mode into integrating some other networking components. So this falls into the integrated networking topics like uh, VNet peering and VNet to VNet connectivity and service endpoints and private link. And this lesson is all about service endpoints. So let's talk about what exactly service endpoints. The use case for service endpoints are limiting public access to some of your Azure resources. If you see here the subnet within the subnet you have a virtual machine. The subnets are part of your VNet. Now what's happening is within the, within the subnet whatever the machine you have it's tried to access with the help of service endpoint to your maybe as your resource for example it can actually go and uh, talk with any of these services so let's talk uh, the similar architecture whatever we have seen here what's happening is with the within the service endpoints the machines uh, whatever the resources you have here is try to access your storage account for example or any other resources that are currently available within the service endpoints. Let's say here I have a storage account. I may also have your storage, uh, maybe a skill database, database Raj, or maybe database for Postgres, or maybe database for MySQL, or maybe for MariaDB, Key Vault, Service Pass, Event Hub, and Data Lake with a Generation 1 and App Services. So, all these are currently available as a service that can be accessed with the help of service endpoints. And these service endpoints can be configured for any of these services. And remember that these are the just the list as of August 2020 and it can be increased in the future and also make sure that not all of these resources are or the services are available within every region but luckily all these are currently available in all the regions but you please do check it what are the services are currently available in your region so that being said let's take an example of one uh, service maybe as your storage account here within this design by default, we know that if we have a storage account, that can be accessed over the internet from anywhere. But that's not the ideal design, uh, what we wanted. We wanted to secure and that specific storage account only should be allowed within, within that specific a subnet or let's say from your on-premises network so let's say within your on-premises whatever the machines are going out definitely there would be a public IP so if you give that public IP if a machine is coming with that public IP as a NAT output then only you should be allowed or something like that you can configure so that what happens is the secure communication is happening with the help of uh, service endpoints for any of these services by using your existing subnets so your if you remember here we are not creating any additional subnets or any additional networks so what we are trying to do is we are actually depending on a subnet so we say that you know whatever the 10.1.0. slash 24 subnet so we use this subnet and we enable whatever the machines are there here within the subnet to connect with the help of service endpoints and we allow them to contact our allow them to access any of these services let's say here in this example it's a storage account so I can allow for only storage accounts to be accessed so that's the idea that's where the network uh, security can come into the picture where by using the service endpoints you can highly secure your as your resources so technically what happens is when you selected your subnet and when you try to create your service endpoints uh, to your Azure services or Azure resources here, uh, whatever they are in the list. So what happens is in the back end, it actually creates a route table and it updates that route table. And uh, based on the route, these machines within this subnet or within this subnet, whatever the resources have, that will be communicating with the help of service endpoint. That's how it's going to work. Let's take the key points for a service endpoint. The first point would be it actually maintains a public address. 
uh, the service uh, and does not get a private IP address. And the service endpoint is accessible by Microsoft DNS because the IP address hasn't changed. DNS uh, stay the same IP. And uh, it's not available from a private on-premises networks. That's a drawback. Uh, for example, you may want to access a service endpoint over your site-to-site -site, uh, VPN uh, with a private IPs that won't work because there's no private IP addresses assigned to the service endpoint. So you can use, however, uh, in that situation you can use um, by adding your organization's public IP. Let's see uh, here whatever the NAT is happening within your subnets uh, from your on-premises network that IP address we would be adding to the uh, service endpoint so that that public IP is allowed. So whatever the clients are coming from your on-premises will should be remain the same IP address that we configure on top of your service endpoint so that it will be allowed. So if you are looking for uh, a concept where it needs a private IP address then the best way would be to consider for private endpoints or private link which is a specific similar concept but with this we are actually talking with the public IP in that it's going to be a separate network we are going to create because if you see here we are actually using here existing subnet have been I've been stressing on a word called subnet all the time uh, because uh, we are not creating here any specific virtual networks or VNet or networking concepts. So we are using the existing subnet or maybe we are just creating a VNet and definitely VNet will have a subnet. But with the private endpoints or private link concept you are actually going to create a specific network so that's a major difference that's why uh, you will have a private IP uh, in that situation so you can check out other lecture for private endpoints or private link concept but for now for now let's jump into demonstration and see how we can simulate the specific design and try to work with our virtual network service endpoints